You know how life sometimes feels like you're juggling a thousand things at once? We've all been there, right? From the daily grind of work to chores, bills, and finding time for friends and family. It's like being on a never-ending merry-go-round. That's where the so-called self-help gurus come into play. They promise to have all the answers with their quick fixes and life hacks. And yeah, it might sound helpful or at least harmless. Following their advice might be sending you on a one-way ticket to Brokesville. There are four reasons why working harder might be making you poorer, not richer. Let's start with the first reason why the work your tail off philosophy might be leading you down a one-way street to Brokesville. It's as simple as this. It just doesn't work. Productivity brands and influencers have a teeny tiny problem. The need to keep churning out content and advice that keeps you hooked. But here's the kicker. Personal finance should be, well, boring and simple. Yep, you heard it right. All you really need to know about personal finance can fit on a post-it note. Save money, avoid nasty high interest debt, make the most of your income, and invest wisely for the long haul. It's that simple, but it's not exactly content gold for those influencers. So what do they do? They end up dishing out uninformed predictions or sharing those rags to riches stories that are often more about luck than solid financial planning. And guess what? We've heard enough of that jazz. Now let's talk about productivity influencers. These folks have the opposite problem. There's just too much talk about that. Without knowing your exact situation, they can't dish out the perfect advice. And you know what uninformed advice is. A report by Psychology Today spilled the beans, revealing that this obsession with toxic productivity is a leading cause of anxiety and depression. Yeah, you heard me right. That relentless focus on being a productive ninja can mess you up big time. The Harvard Business Review, that fancy academic bunch, did a deep dive into employees who got the boot for their not so great workplace behavior. And guess what they found? How on earth could high performers get the boot? Well, they had a little problem. Their strong belief in their own abilities, their stubborn routines, and sky high expectations for everyone around them. Turns out, all these superpowers were making them terrible team players and lousy at delivering good results for their companies. Researchers discovered that a worker who's super laser focused on their own productivity might save a company about $533 through increased output. Not bad, right? Avoiding these toxic high performers, those who collaborate more easily with co-workers and clients and are open to changes in the organization can net the company an estimated $2,489. Ever thought that focusing way too much on productivity could actually make you less productive? You see, when you're obsessed with hyper-optimizing every single task in your life, you end up spending more time and effort than you really need to. First, let's talk about something weird. The number of hours Americans work has actually gone down over the years. Yep, you heard that right. But at the same time, people are complaining about having less free time. How is that possible? you ask. Blame it on technology. Sure, it's made our work a bit easier, but it's also made it easier to be, well, at work. A survey found that nearly half of American workers spend their personal time working remotely. So it's like your office follows you home. Ever feel like your boss has you on speed dial even during your off hours? Yeah, it's happening to a lot of us. Employers are demanding more unpaid overtime from non-hourly workers, and these requests often pop up at the most bizarre times, gobbling up your precious free time, so your moments of real quality downtime are as rare as a unicorn sighting. Psychologist Adam Alter hit the nail on the head when he said, if you carry around a phone that your boss or team can message or call you on at any time, you probably haven't had real free time for years. It's like your phone has become a leash to the never-ending work treadmill. Reason 2. The days of having a stay-at-home partner to handle chores and children are becoming as rare as finding a four-leaf clover. And let's not forget that people are remaining single for longer, which means they have to juggle work, chores, and life all by themselves. No more help from the traditional family units we once knew. It's like trying to juggle flaming torches while riding a unicycle. Now for reason number 3. Distractions. When was the last time you felt bored? It's probably been a while, right? 
That's because our pockets are packed with phones that offer games and messages and apps designed to give us a quick dopamine hit and keep us glued to the screen. These companies are masters at keeping our attention, and they fed right into the whole hustle mindset. They've created the problems, and guess what? They're also cashing in on the solutions. It's like they started a fire and now they're selling us the water to put it out. According to Precision Reports, the global market for productivity apps was worth a mind-boggling $9.42 billion in 2022. And guess what? It's set to grow by 9.2% per year until 2028. In this market, you've got folks selling books, courses, consultations, and tutorials all aimed at helping you dodge the world's distractions and squeeze every drop out of your day. Why, you ask? It's simple. Folks who've made up their minds to be more productive are like high-intent customers on a shopping spree. They're ready to splash their cash because they see it as an investment and not just another purchase. People who are on the quest to supercharge their productivity tend to be, on average, wealthier than those who aren't. It's like they've got stacks of cash but no time to spare and that's where the magic happens. So it's a gold rush out there. Anyone who can amass an audience and convince them that they hold the keys to unlocking productivity heaven can make millions. Some might call it a get-rich-quick scheme style grift, but I'll cut them some slack. The popular faces in this space like Ali Abdul, Alex Haroy, and even good old Gary V truly have their audience's best interest at heart. But here's the twist. Even the good old guys have something to sell you. It's like a classic strategy. Look at me, I'm rich and successful, and you can be too if you buy what I'm selling. It might start out with a video, breaking down how someone made $10 million a year and their revenue sources, and it's all about showing you how their advice can work wonders for you too. If you pick up a few tricks and stay on top of your meetings, or make everyday chores less stressful, that's fantastic. And if you're willing to invest some cash into it, go ahead. But guess what? There aren't millions of folks tuning in for minor improvements. Nope, they're expecting something way bigger that can't be bought. Let's be real. Figuring out how to stay laser focused every single hour of the day probably won't revolutionize your life. And here's the third reason why diving into the productivity rabbit hole can leave you worse off in the long run. You're probably wasting your time. But hey, there are two sides to this coin. Let's call them reason 3A and reason 3B. Reason 3A, after setting up calendars, reminders, journals, meditation sessions, attending seminars, and watching productivity content, you've likely wasted more time than you'll ever save with some fancy plan. Now, reason 3B is the interesting part. Being productive isn't the same as being busy, but if you're focused on not wasting a single minute, you're more likely to get sidetracked by things that won't do you any good. A survey in the UK found that the average person is on task for just 2 hours and 53 minutes a day. Trying to optimize that time might lead you to more work being dumped on your plate. Good for the company, not so great for you. Remember, strong performance is vital for career progression, but being the only one who does the work for three normal co-workers won't necessarily get you that promotion. Being too good at your job can sometimes work against you as managers worry about finding someone to replace you. And business owners, listen up. While it might seem like doing it all is the way to go, the productivity mindset that some gurus preach won't make your business sustainable or scalable. The productivity cult is a little split on this. Some say you should work 100-hour weeks until you're a billionaire and then maybe take a day off. Others argue that if you're getting paid based on how many hours you work, you're not properly delegating, and that's not a good look. The truth? There's no one-size-fits-all solution. So here's the bottom line. It's perfectly okay not to be a productivity wizard. Comparing yourself to online superstars who are either incredibly lucky or make a living talking about how organized they are isn't going to do you any favors. It's like comparing apples to oranges. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to watch such eye-opening content. And until next time, see you all.